All right, so remember, we're going to make lots of noise for our next storyteller, and that storyteller is... Jay Butera! Sometimes the, uh, the greatest rewards that we get are from things that we give up, not things that we get. And that's what I'm going to tell you about tonight. And it's Christmas, 1974, December. Uh, it's Christmas Eve day. I'm 16 years old, and uh, my parents had given me 15 nice Christmases, but this year, for some reason, it was... Pretty bleak, Christmas was on the back burner. We didn't have a Christmas tree, we didn't have a wreath. The house wasn't decorated, it was, it was pretty grim for me. And my brother and sister, I'm the youngest of three kids, my brother and sister were away at college, they came home, they weren't thinking about Christmas, but I was just young enough to want some of that magic in Christmas still. And, uh, so I decided I'll buy a Christmas tree myself. And that was kind of sad because it's just me all alone going out to buy the Christmas tree. But I drove out into the country and I, I picked the biggest, most beautiful Christmas tree I could find. It took two guys and me to put this tree on the top of my car and drove back home. Now it's getting near dinner time on Christmas Eve. Still no one's around at my house and I decide I'm gonna try and put this tree up myself. And I go to move the, the tree off the car and I could not even get it off the car. It was all I could do to roll this tree off the car onto the ground. I couldn't move it, I couldn't get it into the house and it just sat there on our, our front step and, and I'm thinking this is the saddest Christmas I've ever seen. And what am I going to do? I still don't have a Christmas tree in the house. And I remembered that there was one of those uh, Christmas tree sale lots not too far from the house where they stand outside with the oil cans and the, the wood burning to stay warm and they're selling Christmas trees. And I said, well, I'll go there and I'll just get a normal old Christmas tree and Forget about this world's most beautiful Christmas tree that's sitting here on the front porch. <laughs> so I go up to the Christmas tree lot and I think, all right, we'll make the best of this. And I get there and it's closed. Even the Christmas tree salespeople have gone home to enjoy their Christmas trees and I have nothing. But the sign says, Christmas trees free for the taking. I thought, well, that's good. That's good news. But then I looked around and there is nothing left. I mean, there is a couple of Charlie Brown Christmas trees, three feet high. I didn't know if these were cuttings or garlands or just the waste, but I'm kicking around through these branches, and then a car pulls up. It is this big old station wagon, the kind of station wagons that used to have that wood paneling on the side, and, and I heard it before I saw it because the muffler was hanging off the back end with a coat hanger and it, it pulls into the lot and, uh, and I don't know how many kids there were in, in this big old station wagon, but the kids just poured out of it, this huge family. And, and I, I said to them, I said, you're looking for a Christmas tree? And one of the older looking kids looks at me and said, yeah, we do this every year. And I knew what he meant. He meant that they go every year to get a free Christmas tree after the tree lots closed. And so then I knew exactly what I needed to do. And I walked up to the father and I said to him on the side, I said, do you want a really, really nice Christmas tree? He said, yeah, that'd be good. And I said, well, follow me home. And so all those kids got back into that big station wagon and I drove them back to my house where that tree was sitting on the front porch, the one that I couldn't move. And I said, that one, we can't use it. Why don't you take it? And I'll tell you what, to see, to see these kids, I mean, I knew it was the nicest Christmas tree that they had ever seen. 
And it took me and the father and the eldest son to get that tree up on their car and we strapped it onto that big old station wagon and they drove off and I felt really good. And I went back up to that Christmas tree lot and I picked up one of those three foot Charlie Brown Christmas trees and I took it home. And that was, as it turned out, the nicest Christmas tree I'd ever had. And I got a little bit of that magic back in Christmas that year. Thank you very much. <laughs>